so as we agreed we are back uh, in the last month i as discussed last time i printed out uh, some upgrades that i think this that are due for this printer um, the first one you will see those are printed in blue uh, so the first one that you see is this one this is a support uh, for the spool holder uh, i like the art kind of artillery sidewinder style spool holder so to have the spool order drop the filament fr exactly from the top of the extruder. So I designed this one, which is very simple to install, just two screws with T-nuts on top and other two screws on the, on the front side. And this will keep the spool holder in place. The other thing connected to the spool holder is a small spacer that you see over here. Uh, the small spacer, also this one, will just keep the spool uh, from floating back and forth. So it's just a simple, simple, simple spacer to keep the spool in place, especially closer to the end of the spool where it tends to float around under high speed. Um, then, um, the other thing I noticed in the previous video was that uh, the tension here under the X, on, on the X belt uh, was uh, not much, not as much as I like. So what I did, and this screw was, this tensioner was already at the maximum. So what I did, uh, I just printed a spacer, if you can see the blue one over here, the spacer, uh, which is this one. So um, a simple spacer that allows a per kind of pre-tension in the X belt. So this way you have half tension in the tensioner and it's easier to adjust. Then I went to something more for me. So I like the belt to be driven by timing pulleys. So not classical pulleys like they are on default over here, but I want them to have a gear. So to have traction on both sides of the belt. This way I, I replaced the standard pulley over here with this one, which is a timing pulley. Let me show you. this one and um, so it grips also on this side um, this one is a different size from the factory one so um, I had to print out um, also um, some spacer and washers so how the pulley works is that um, uh, it has a fixed part and a moving part so if you put a standard screw in the timing pulley it will grip with the pulley itself and it won't be able to rotate correctly so what do what I did I printed these small washers these small washers this one so that uh, I could uh, uh, let the screw be attached to the washer and not to and not to block the rotation of the of the a timing pulley. You can use also um, uh, O-rings, uh, plastic elastic O-rings. They would serve this, the same exact purpose of the of the thing. I like to print my my own stuff. So I just replaced that one here. So now the belt grips on both sides. And after that, I decided to go on and do the same for the Y-axis. That was fairly more complicated because with the default. Um, uh, attachment uh, from the factory it was not possible to replace uh, uh, the standard pulley with a timing pulley. So I had to redesign the entire thing uh, um, to support that. So I came up with um, this piece, this one, which uh, basically gets attached on the back of the printer. And as you can see, there's a hole over here where you can put this one, which happens to be the real one where you attach the, the pulley over here. So you install the pulley over here, you just slide it in over here, and from the back you can still have some ability to tension the, the belt on the y-axis. And this goes to replace the entire thing on the back. Uh, is it necessary? No. Um, I think that having two 
uh, timing pulley on both sides from the motor and on the opposite side helps a little bit with vibration and ringing at higher speed. Probably a lower speed impact is marginal, but anecdotally, I would tell you that this seems to work best at higher speed, especially with this massive big print plate and uh, a heavy uh, extruder on top. So uh, at the bottom of the video, you will find the links to these projects, both the STL file and the Fusion 360 project. Um, you can print them yourself. Uh, what you will need mostly are nuts and bolts and timing pulleys uh, that you can find cheap on Amazon. Maybe I'll put some link uh, to one I bought. Um, and yes, and I will also put some uh, installing instruction. It's not complicated, but uh, you have to be careful in some areas just to make sure the pulley turns correctly. It's very simple. I will put the instruction down at the bottom of the video. After those upgrades to test them out, I did uh, a, a nice stress test, test on the printer. Um, I will put a link again. Uh, there's a kind of, uh, how to say, contest called a speedboat race context where you print the classical benchy the 3d benchy at higher speed and you measure how fast it is of course this printer is not designed to compete uh, it, there, is, there are some things that make this printer impossible to go as fast as you want first of all the design itself this massive build plate that moves back and forth it just it's too slow and it's, there's too mass moving back and forth, uh, so as you increase the speed, it's hard for them and the motor to keep up with the movement. Also, the, the cooling system of the printer itself, I tried to improve that by removing the factory protection, which is not very safe, but I was able to remove some weight on the extruder itself, on the hot end itself. Uh, the, the cooling part is just not fast enough to cool down the, the, the printed part enough to be as fast as you want. Uh, so there are some limits. Also having one only structure would tend to make the printer fluctuates back and forth or side by side. Um, so it's not really a competition, uh, but it's fun to try to push this printer limit. So I'll show you um, after in a second some benches that I printed out and uh, their respective time. Uh, as a sp um, I want to anticipate that the, the fastest bench I could print was around 45 minutes, which uh, compared to a standard quality bench, which is two hours, is a significant improvement. Uh, anyway, uh, let's see some of the benches, how they turn out, uh, and then we we'll get back for the summary of this video. As you can see, a lot of benchy went by. Uh, so I, uh, as, as, you, as you saw in the uh, videos before, um, the quality changes over speed. That was expected. The faster you go, the lower the quality you get. Those benchy were printed apart from the last one, which was uh, the fastest one printed using the speed, uh, benchy speed context rules. Uh, they were printed with 20% in fill, 0.4 nozzle size, uh, 0.20 layer height, very standard printing quality. So this is what you should expect to get if you buy the printer and you go fast. Um, one thing to notice is that um, it seems like that the, the um, stepper motors are fixed to 1200 or 1200 uh, acceleration maximum. I could not push that farther than that. So 
Could this printer go faster? Maybe. As much as I can get access to the original firmware, I may, at the Marlin firmware open source, I can try to even push for further the speed. Still, it's a very good, um, it can reach, I think, a very good printing speed. And you can see this printer prints. A lot of prints went by, uh, weeks of prints. Attempts, yeah, failed, failed attempts also. Um, one suggestion I can leave after this test, uh, um, of course, as we know, of the first layer is critical. Having a great first layer, initial layers, is very important. The size of this bed requires a um, significant time to eat up. I mean, you can get the 60 degree degrees very quickly, but you need time to, stabil to let the glass stabilize at that temperature. I normally wait around uh, 30 to 45 minutes before printing at high speed. If you have to print at low speed, uh, just as you can see the temperature reach from the bed, that's good enough to print out. But if you want to go high speed, just my suggestion would be to wait at least 30, 45 minutes before even attempting a, a print. Uh, don't be tempted into constantly tweaking the, X, uh, the Z offset. That is wrong. Uh, the, the Z offset should be set once and then kept because that should not be supposed to change. So how I did it, and please, if you have better ways, just let me know. I eat up the nozzle at printing temperature. I eat the bed at printing temperature. I let it stabilize for 45 minutes. Then I ra ran an auto bed leveling. Then I ran the Z offset calibration using a piece of paper. And then I ran, I ran another auto bed leveling process again. That was my Z offset, and the Z offset never changed for all the benching. So it always printed this with the same Z offset. That's my, my tip at the end. Um, now, one question that people ask me, what about other material? This printer I know is not designed especially for PLA. This printer is designed for PLA, but also especially for flexible materials where the all metal, all tanned, and the direct drive makes the difference. So, in the next video, I'll try to print materials, uh, TPU, maybe ABS, again, different kind of PLA, uh, mixed uh, materials. I'll try to see how this printer performs over materials. So, we discussed in the first video the installation and how the first print and how it printed out of the box. Then we tried the speed, then we will try the materials, the quality and speed and the material support. And that will conclude what I have to say on, on this printer. Um, okay, so um, see you at the next video. I will leave all the information down in the description. Please like and subscribe. That would help us a lot, as always. Uh, if you have comments, if you want to tweak the design, you are greatly welcome to tweak my design, make them better. This is just the first draft. They have areas of improvement, significant. And so if you want to contribute, you are totally welcome to contribute. Okay, thanks guys. See you at the next video. Take care and print a lot. Bye. Bye.